Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We are starting the morning off with a live look out at the Alamo City. We're going to talk about possibly record breaking temperatures, record number of days. And I got to tell you, for some people out there, long four day weekend, how they're going to enjoy it. Good morning. morning. It is six o'clock. It is Sunday, September 3rd. I want a four day weekend. Me too. I know people who had a, well, I know people who had a Friday. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Friday into so Monday. Like Those are the super lucky ones. You know what? I would say we're unlucky because we have to work like the next 85 days, but, but we like our job. Yeah. So big win. And part of <laughs> we're the lucky we get to be here. So Sarah, I said record breaking. Are we breaking records? I mean, not as far as the high today, but right. as far as the number of 100 degree days, absolutely. Today's going to be our 67th 100 degree day in San Antonio. Outside right now, it's 77 degrees, 76 in New Braunfels. Seguin, you're at 73. Bernie, 72 and 72 in Kerrville. A little bit warmer of a start today than what we had yesterday. That's just because there's a touch more humidity out there right now. Now, as you look at the day today, high fire danger all day long around noon. We're going to be at 92 100 for the high southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. So yes, today will be our 67th 100 degree day. I'll have a more in depth look at your Labor Day forecast tomorrow, and we're going to take some time and look at some of our local rivers. Much of many of our local rivers have zero stream flow on what will be a big tubing day across the Comal and Guadalupe. I'll have those details ahead coming up in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, the Seguin Police Department is still working to figure out what exactly happened that ended in a shooting. Bless you. 24-year-old Isaac Mesa Jr. from New Braunfels behind bars this morning for shooting and killing someone. Officers say they found the 36-year-old victim with a gunshot wound. We're still waiting to learn that victim's name, but Mesa Jr. now being held in the Guadalupe County Jail while police continue to investigate, trying to figure out what exactly happened and why. A vigil was held outside the Bear County Jail to remember Emmanuel Mora, the man who died while in custody of BCS BCSO deputies. Deputies say when they were arresting Mora last weekend, he started kicking and trying to escape. That's when he was tased by deputies and was unresponsive. First responders tried to rescue him, but he was pronounced dead shortly after. At the vigil, Mora's cousin says her family is still trying to make sense of everything. Still doesn't seem real. Uh, my cousin was a lot of things and one of them was just a good man. We want to find out what really happened and I don't think we're getting the right answers. We're hearing different things so I think we all just really want to know what happened. BCSO says Mora's death is still being investigated. Well, a Texas judge temporarily blocking a law that some say infringe their freedom of expression. A San Antonio drag entertainment company, they're challenging Senate Bill 12. The law would ban drag performances in front of minors. In fact, the language of the bill reads, quote, relating to restricting certain sexually oriented performances on public property on the premises of a commercial enterprise or in the presence of a child, authorizing a civil penalty creating a criminal offense. Camelia Juarez tells us how some in our community disagree with the law. Oh, it's frightening. I miss when the worst things drag queens had to worry about was the rain or it being too hot. Drag queen Iridescent says she worries that her full face of makeup and pink suit could lead to criminal charges for performers like her and the places she performs. But if they saw us, I could be arrested or fined or become a felon just because I'm talking to you in front of a camera dressed in a suit that I made. San Antonio drag company 360 Queen Entertainment is challenging SB 12 alongside the American Civil Liberties Union, arguing the law would affect the drag company's ability to perform at Tomatillo's, a family-owned Mexican restaurant on the city's north side, because minors could see the show from the open patio. All you have to do is trust American parents to know what their children should or not, should not be exposed to and allow them to make the decision for themselves. The ACLU argues SB 12 could impact more than drag. SB 12 is written in such an overly broad way that it could impact things like traveling theater shows, um, concerts, professional cheerleading, um, even something like a karaoke night. So it's quite dangerous in the way that it could lead to government censorship of many different forms of art. For Iridescent, expressing herself in heels helps her mental health. If I'm sad, I can do a sad song and make the audience cry with me. If I'm happy, I can do a happy song and get the audience to have fun with me. And 
<laughs> cheaper than therapy. Iridescent says she's thankful a Texas judge temporarily blocked SB 12, but she's still nervous. I feel like we're on the edge of a cliff and we're holding on by a tiny little thread and that we don't know if we're going to be saved right now. The Texas Attorney General's office is representing the state in this lawsuit. The AG's office says that this law was passed to protect children and uphold public decency. It'll be several weeks before a judge decides if this law will stay in place. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. There are a lot of new laws in the Texas books here, especially after September 1st. So we have a lot of new laws, 774 of them. They include laws pertaining to schools, fentanyl, workplace violence, electric vehicle registration, and so much more. We have a list of some of the most notable ones that are now in effect. Just head to KSAT.com. The mayor of Uvalde, Texas, wants District Attorney Christina Mitchell to step down. That's according to a written statement linked to a lawsuit. Mayor Don McLaughlin claims Mitchell is blocking the city's investigation in the 2022 mass shooting at Robb Elementary School. McLaughlin said 15 months have passed since the incident and that, quote, our community deserves answers. Mitchell is in charge of the criminal investigation into the shooting, and she says she plans on presenting evidence to a grand jury before the end of the year. All right, Ken Paxton now speaking to members of his own party, calling for removal of Republican members that are supporting his impeachment. So here's the thing. Technically, he is under a gag order. That means he cannot discuss his impeachment trial. That trial begins on Tuesday. In remarks at a packed pavilion at a park near his North Texas home, the now suspended AG blasted the Texas House of Representatives that impeached him and talked about its leader, Speaker Dade Phelan. Now, Paxton ended his speech by saying, quote, unquote, Let's clean house. Well, if there is a bright side to this drought that we've been having, dinosaur tracks have been uncovered up in North Texas due to low water levels. They were found in Dinosaur Valley State Park in Glen Rose, which is located about an hour and a half south of Dallas. Paleontologists believe the tracks are from around 110 million years ago. They say the tracks are from a dinosaur that weighed up to 44 tons. Not only did low water levels cause these tracks to pop up, but it's also helping crews remove sediments, covering and filling those tracks. All right, time now, 6.07, 77 degrees. And speaking of low water levels, I've got a look at some of the low water levels across rivers around San Antonio and South Central Texas. Stream flow is at zero in many places. Details ahead. All right, good morning. Happy Sunday. Taking a live look out of the Alamo oh, look, City. Oh, an airplane. Se yes, there are a lot of people traveling this weekend. <laughs> 77 degrees now. Sarah Spivey, yesterday, you know, it didn't seem that bad outside. You know, and, and that's the difference between having a humid afternoon and a drier afternoon. And also, temperatures were not above 105 degrees yesterday. We got up to 101. Oh, we can do that. Uh, yeah, we that's, can do that. that's, that's easy. easy. <laughs> I'm glad you guys feel positive about it because that's the way the weather is going to be for the foreseeable future for us. Highs right near 100 degrees. So take advantage of the cooler temperatures out there this morning. 72 in Kerrville. Rock Springs here at 72 this morning, 76 in Del Rio, 76 in Catula. Good morning in New Braunfels, where it's 76 degrees, 73 in Pleasant, and 75 in Gonzales. In your case, that 12 hour forecast, sunny skies, temperatures climbing. You know the drill. 85 at 10, 92 at noon. We'll have a few cumulus clouds in the afternoon. Those Toy Story clouds that uh, kind of just look like cotton balls and don't produce any rain. That's the case this afternoon for us. 100 degrees. Well, southeast winds at about 5 to 15 miles per hour, so a little bit of a breeze at times. And here's a look at highs in your neighborhood. 99 in Kerrville. Canyon Lake will be at 99 degrees. 99 in Hondo. 98 in Yavaldi. 102 in Del Rio. 100 in Catula. 100 in Pleasanton and 99 in Beeville. All right, take a look at the drought across Texas. 76% of the state is in drought. Exceptional drought extending around San Antonio out to East Texas and the coast. Let's take a closer view around South Central Texas. Absolutely no soil moisture for areas in San Antonio, New Braunfels, Bandera, Kerrville, Fredericksburg. This long period of extended drought has really done a number on our local rivers. Take a look at stream flows at some of our local rivers. The Nueces River below Yavaldi, zero stream flow. Doesn't mean there's not any water in the Nueces River. It's just not flowing. And so you get bacteria buildup, things like that. As for the Frio near uh, Concan, we're talking 
inches a second. That's how slow the river is flowing. The Frio River near Concan. A lot of people float on the river out there and it is uh, pretty dangerous with the uh, bacteria starting to build up there. As for the Medina River near Lacoste, zero stream flow there. The Guadalupe River near Spring Branch, zero stream flow there as well. And a lot of people are going to be heading out to New Braunfels today to float the Kamal. Go ahead and support the businesses out there. Absolutely. But the Comal is very, very slow. We're only talking about 70 cubic feet per second when the median flow is usually about 200 cubic feet per second. To put that in perspective, floating the Comal may only take usually like an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes. Now it's taking closer to three and a half to four hours to float the Comal. So if you're planning on tubing today, plan for a slow and slow float and a lot of people out there today. And unfortunately, no rain chances for us over the next several days. Rain chances are practically zero. And because the ground is so dry, reminder that fire danger remains high this Labor Day weekend. No campfires or burn piles. Avoid using tools that create sparks. Dispose of cigarettes properly. Do not drag trailer chains and do not park your vehicles on the grass. Again, fire danger high through tomorrow as well. Labor Day is going to be very similar to today. Waking up tomorrow at 76 degrees, 100 for the high. Quiet weather for any kind of activities outside, and you're going to want to make sure to use that sunscreen as there will be plenty of sunshine. 101 on Tuesday, 100 on Wednesday and Thursday, 101 Friday and Saturday. Today is an ozone action day as well. I'll have a look at the forecast air quality and what that means coming up in a bit. And in the next half hour, we're going to talk about the extended forecast even beyond this week. What can we expect? I hope you'll stick around for that. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. All right, just about 6.15, 77 degrees. And just as Sarah just mentioned, it's been a hot summer. Businesses around San Antonio think so as well. We're going to hear from a business owner that is having a hard time staying open because of the heat. Good morning and welcome back. So Labor Day weekend usually marks the unofficial end of the summer season. And with record heat, some businesses say this is a summer they want to forget. Oh, Avery Everett sitting down with the owners of an outdoor gelato shop struggling to keep their doors open. She also asked CPS Energy about expectations for the fall. All right, ladies. To Isaac Butler. You're going to be really happy with okay. that pistachio. It is fantastic. Labor Day weekend couldn't come any sooner. I would say uh, as far as this summer goes, we will we'll be happy to see it in the rearview mirror. He and Ivette Gray own the Holotus shop Congelado, and summer 2023 has come with many struggles. It can be really disheartening. Uh, to be quite honest, uh, <laughs> I take a lot of pride in the shop. With the hottest summer on record in San Antonio, so many outdoor businesses and plazas are sitting empty. But as the fall starts to come soon, CPS Energy is still warning that there might be concerns with the energy grid. We just got to build more capacity. Just two weeks ago, CPS Energy sounded the alarm about the potential of controlled energy outages. San Antonio and Bear County officials also warned of ongoing concerns about the ERCOT grid in the summer heat. And until we get the, the, the scale that we need to completely, get, you know, do away with this issue, you know, I mean, next summer will not be much different than this summer, depending upon what happens at the state level. So you're kind of wondering how long does this heat last? The congelado team is ending this summer with high energy bills and one freezer damaged by the heat. When it's 105, it, it doesn't feel like it's special. Both hoping this Labor Day is not their last. We'll never know what this summer cost us. Uh, I just hope that if um, that we can be here to fight another summer. That day two weeks ago when CPS Energy warned of those controlled outages, I wanted to see if it worked. Now CPS Energy tells me they weren't able to track exactly how many households turned down their energy usage, but within their conservation program, they were able to save enough energy to power 46,000 homes. I'm Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Well, I know at home, uh -huh. I keep mine at 78 and, okay. and you know, it's a little Wait, warm when you're there, when you're out of the home. No, when I'm there. Okay. Um, Cause I don't, I don't like seeing a high bill, but if you have an ice cream shop, you can't mm, keep it at 78. I mean, to keep the refrigeration system running. So I wonder how low they have to keep it. I'm sure their bill is not. No, low. I think uh, air conditioning bills for so many small businesses, it hurts your margins. Yeah.
Right. Time now, 620, 76 degrees. More updates on the way for <laughs> X. So weird. Of course, we're talking about formerly known as Twitter and some news from Apple. That's in your consumer news. That's up next. All right, X, formerly known as Twitter. I, uh, you had brought up a good question. The verb of to tweet, is that now Xing? It's to post. To post, that's less exciting. Oh, no one wants to just post. All right, post. so X just <laughs> updated its privacy policy. That means users will have more personal information exposed on the site. The company says it may start collecting and using, quote, biometric information for safety, security, and identification purposes. Doing so says it will actually help fight impersonation attempts. X also says it may start collecting users' employment and education history, suggesting potential job openings or further target users with advertising. So this is multifaceted. On the bad part, Elon Musk has come after uh, who's uh, Zuckerberg mm -hmm. saying that They're not gonna Facebook, be fighting. well, Facebook and Meta, <laughs> take all your information and use it for advertising. Now it seems like X is doing the same thing, but it, it also seems like, for the positive side, they're trying to do it for good, find people jobs, and make sure that there's not fraudulent users stealing your names, which I've had or to deal with. Or when we just talk about something and it pops up on your feed. Always. Always. They're always listening. And Apple is reportedly testing the use of a 3D, 3D printing process to make part of its stainless steel Apple Watch. So Bloomberg says the new approach will use less material and be more eco-friendly than current methods. The process has been reportedly been underway for about three years. And a drone powered by artificial intelligence beating some of the best drone users at their own game. So racers have a week to learn this course while AI used deep reinforcement learning and they, you know, did it on race day. So the AI drone Beat the humans mm. 15 out of 25 times. It's Terminator. And speaking of things flying around the sky, the Pentagon is launching a website to give the public easier access to declassified mm. information about UFOs. This is only the declassified stuff, so they still have a lot mm. behind the scenes they don't want us to know. Right, right. So the Pentagon officially refers to UFOs as unidentified aerial phenomena and UAPs mm, it's a new I'll verb. never get used to that. Nope. The Defense Department <laughs> billed the site as a one-stop shop for publicly available UFO, UFA UAP. records. U oh, that one. <laughs> Officials believe it will shed light on the work done that coordinates efforts across federal agencies to detect and identify UAPs, a.k.a. UFOs, a.k.a. aliens. I don't think that AK worked, but that's fine. <laughs> All right, time not just about 627, 78 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. It is 6.30 this Sunday. It is September 3rd. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So yesterday, the start of Labor Day weekend for a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. Did you make it out and about after the show? Um, I mean, I watered the garden. Nice. Yeah. How we looking? Actually, pretty good. Okay, that's... you did the whole transplant. You had the story yesterday. It's It's... Mm -hmm surviving but not okay. thriving yet yet <laughs> um in the heat sarah these triple digits that continue are not helping yeah that's how i felt all summer surviving just not thriving <laughs> because of the heat the triple digit heat and today is going to be our 67th 100 degree day in san antonio this year outside right now it is 72 in bernie good morning in hondo where it's 74 76 in converse 73 in kerrville 70 in Yavaldi. And just a reminder, today is an ozone action day. What does that mean? It means that ozone could be a little elevated this afternoon uh, during the peak heat of the day. If you are sensitive to ozone, you probably know you are. And so this afternoon, that's when the atmosphere and the air quality could be a little unhealthy for those who are sensitive to ozone. If you've never noticed it before, you're probably not somebody who's sensitive to ozone, so no need to worry there. It's just a great day to carpool. If you can, honestly, 100 degrees in San Antonio today, 100 tomorrow for Labor Day. We'll continue with a high fire danger all weekend long. And coming up in the forecast, not only do I have your seven day outlook, I have an outlook through the mid middle of September that you're going to want to uh, pay attention to. I'll have those forecast details coming up for you in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. It's a story we first brought you yesterday. It's a story we've been following pretty closely. A wildfire out of Walker County in Huntsville, Texas. As of this morning, officials say 4,254 acres burned. 
flames now 40 percent contained so this is video from our sister station out in houston kprc as of now residents in certain areas they're being asked to evacuate to local churches the florida forest service has actually been called on over to help out they're going to be taking over operations tomorrow morning allowing the texas forest service to resume operations finally have a little bit of a break so the texas a m forest service says crews have actually been out there battling those flames since 2 p.m on friday Investigation still underway. They're trying to figure out how this all started. We're going to bring you more updates on GMSA at 8 a.m. A highly mutated coronavirus variant has been detected by three surveillance systems in the U.S. However, the CDC says it accounts for less than 1% of all the circulated COVID viruses in the country right now. So far, 24 human infections with the BA.2.86 virus have been reported in eight countries, including the U.S. So this variant has more than 30 changes to its spike protein, and the scientists are currently testing to see if it dodges immunity. Well, from a music festival to a nightmare, the Burning Man Festival in the Nevada desert turning into chaos. Tens and thousands of people at Burning Man, they're now being told to conserve water and food. This in the aftermath of heavy rain that left people stranded in the desert. So this is video from Burning Man. Authorities with the Bureau of Land Management now turning people away from entering Black Rock City. That's because that high rains that actually closed down roads. The annual event attracts tens of thousands of people from around the world participating in art and community events. Organizers have told people already there, if you're staying there, you have to conserve water, food and fuel, as well as shelter in place. The former governor of New Mexico, Bill Richardson, has died at 75. He had served as energy secretary and United Nations ambassador under the Clinton administration. He was elected governor in 2002 and served two terms. His namesake center had privately worked on behalf of families of detainees and hostages. He traveled to Russia last year and held meetings with Russian leadership to discuss the release of basketball star Brittany Griner and former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan, he most recently was working with the family of Travis King to try to get the soldier out of North Korea. Well, SAG after the Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, bless you. They've already been on strike against major TV and film companies, and now they may have a second walkout in the works. So this one against major video game companies. The union announcing it'll seek authorization from the members to strike against several video game makers ahead of negotiations that are scheduled to resume later this month. The union says the strike authorization vote that is needed as the union tries to negotiate pay increases and protection from artificial intelligence. The union is asking for an 11 percent increase for those who participate in video games. Well, officials say millions of people traveling this holiday weekend. That's despite the hot weather, the high gas prices, and of course, the busy airports. That's right, CNN's Pete Munteen looks at the final days of one of the busiest summer travel periods on record. It is a climactic end to a record-breaking summer of travel, with a new survey saying more than half of all Americans expect to travel for Labor Day. At Chicago O'Hare, officials are bracing for a 7% increase in passengers compared to the holiday weekend last year. The TSA says after this weekend, this summer will set a new air travel record with more than 227 million people screened at airports since Memorial Day. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says flight cancellations are going down, but the latest numbers from FlightAware show it is delays that have increased. This summer, more than 25% of flights arrived late by an average of 57 minutes. This year we have seen significant improvement. That doesn't mean that the system was immune from some tough travel days this year and this summer. AAA says even still, travelers remain undaunted, booking 4% more domestic trips compared to last Labor Day weekend and 44% more international trips, with destinations like Vancouver, Rome, and London topping the list. You are seeing flights and trips over to Europe and down to Latin America booming right now with numbers that are significantly higher than what we saw pre-pandemic. The crowds also stretch to the roads. AAA forecasts that popular routes like Palm Springs to San Diego and the Jersey Shore to Manhattan will hit peak congestion on Monday. 
Before this weekend, the average price for a gallon of regular gas flirted with a seasonal record set back in 2012. Like everything else, it just keeps going up, and it's why I'm meeting my family halfway. I would have driven all the way down to Baltimore and back. We knew they were going to go up. We knew it, so we filled up before we left Jersey. Pete Buttigieg says almost 3% of recent flight delays were tied to air traffic control staffing issues. He says his goal is to get that number to zero. And we're hitting the road for Labor Day. We saw a lot of people on the roads yesterday. The price at the pump, a little bit higher than usual. AAA says the average national price, $3.82. So we're close to the price record set in 2012 for Labor Day weekend travel. At just two cents higher, that record price was $3.84 a gallon. All right, so AAA also saying 11 states across the country, they are averaging $4 a gallon or more, especially on the East Coast in California. But lucky for us here in Texas, one of the great reasons to live in the great state of Texas, the average around the state, $3.40 here in the Alamo City, it is even less than that, $3.36. The sad news, Experts say the trend of high gas prices probably going to continue for the fall season. Mm. And speaking of travel, we got big plans for the San Antonio International Airport. They expect to break records this weekend. We expect to hear from the president and CEO of the San Antonio International Airport, their plans for expansion, the multi-billion dollar plans, what the future is going to look like, and what you can expect. Coming up, leading SA, 8 a.m. Don't miss it. Time now, 638, 78 degrees. As we had to break, we want to take a look at some of the Labor Day events going around the Alamo City. So if you're looking for some ways to celebrate this weekend, today is your last opportunity to visit Market Square for their free Labor Day celebration. That's from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. There'll be games for kids, food, vendors, and so much more. San Antonio first responders will also be there to teach the importance of safety to families. For more information, just head to our website, ksat.com. And tomorrow, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, they're hosting a Labor Day blood drive in an effort to help against blood shortages. They're also honoring Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. It's going on from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Rolling Oaks Mall. That is tomorrow on Labor Day. The Blood and Tissue Center says donations, they're needed during the holidays. So come on out. You and the family help the community help save lives. We'll be right back. All right, good morning and welcome back. Happy Labor Day weekend. We're taking a live look out of the Alamo City. Only 76 degrees now, according to the bottom right portion of our screen. Sarah Spivey, how hot is it going to get? 100. 100. 100. 100. <laughs> For the 67th time this year. Oh. We're going to get up to 100 degrees. And Guys, if I'm being honest with you, the outlook through mid-September does not look great for rain either. Does it look better than Sarah Costa's side eye she just gave me when I said a hunt? Uh, yeah, probably. Okay, that's fair. Because that's we're a pretty set. cold yeah. Yeah. side eye. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and take a look outside with temperatures right now this morning. 70 in Rock Springs, 73 Kerrville, New Braunfels. You're at 76. Good morning in Uvalde at 69 degrees. 76 in Del Rio, 76 in Catula, and 73 in Pleasanton. Humidity is a little higher than it was to start the day yesterday. Dew points in the upper 60s, low 70s. So you're definitely going to feel the humidity as you step outside early this morning compared to uh, yesterday. Different story out in Del Rio, Rock Springs, where the humidity is pleasantly low. But as you look at today's dew point forecast or the forecast for the humidity, it is going to come down in the afternoon. So right when we're the hottest, it's going to be the driest. That's good news. That means no heat index value. What you see is what you get on the thermometer for this afternoon. And what what you'll see is 100 degrees this afternoon on the thermometer. Here's a look at that KSAT 12 hour forecast 85 and sunny at 10. Around noon will be at 92. A few more clouds around noon and then in the afternoon 100 for the high temperature, partly cloudy skies and winds will be from the southeast at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Here's a look at forecast highs in your neighborhoods 99 Lost Maples, 102 Bandera, 100 Rio Medina, rather 100 in Castroville, 99 in Converse. 99 in Seguin, 100 in New Braunfels. Bernie, Bulverde, 99 degrees this afternoon, 101 in Floresville, and 100 in Pleasanton. All right, let's take a look at the weather setup. Across the nation, not too much going on. It shouldn't be that bad as far as travel goes, except for areas across uh, the west seeing some rainfall. But air travel, other than being busy, should be okay as far as uh, the uh, 
the weather goes, there is a low pressure system across North Texas that will be bringing at least some rain to areas from Dallas down to Waco and even closer to Houston too. So if you have travel plans on the roads along I-10, there will be a few isolated showers. Similar story around uh, I-35 there and across East Texas, a little bit more scattered activity, but generally a fairly quiet day across the state of Texas in spite of that low. And then it's just bad news, okay? I'm sorry, that heat high is going to build back over Texas in the week ahead. And beyond that, it doesn't really look like this heat high is going much of anywhere in the forecast for us. So when we look at the mid-September temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, they are predicting that much of Texas will likely be above average when it comes to temperatures. What's average this time of year? Low 90s, upper 80s. So temperatures are going to be hotter than that through mid-September. And we've got at least 100 degrees in the forecast for this upcoming week. On top of that, with that heat high in place, precipitation is likely to be below average through mid-September, at least for us around San Antonio and South Central Texas. Not great news when you consider the drought is exceptional right now. So I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but we're going to tell you what we see in the forecast and at least tomorrow for Labor Day, any kind of outdoor activity should not be interrupted by any kind of rain, uh, though we could use some rain right now and I would take rain even on a holiday at this point. 76 degrees in the morning tomorrow morning, a few clouds out there early in the morning, 91 at noon and then tomorrow afternoon 100. Just a reminder, fire danger remains high today and tomorrow and tomorrow our winds will actually be a little stronger from the south gusting up to about 20 miles per hour. I know a lot of people like to do uh, outdoor barbecuing, those kinds of things. Just be very careful as uh, high fire danger remains in place today and tomorrow. And then we're at it with the triple digits, adding on to that margin. I mean, you know, 2023 is the year with the most 100 degree days on record, and we're just going to continue to solidify that record. I mean, it is it is pretty daunting. We're going to get to at least 70, 100 degree days this year, guys. OK, we were talking about this last weekend. We are eventually about to transition into El Nino. Mm -hmm. When that happens, though, could we potentially get more rain on the way, cooler There's, temps? Is that, that rain? That's a great question. You know, there is a good article on KSAT.com right now. Just Google search El Nino KSAT and you'll find it. We are cautiously optimistic for early 2024 for more rain. Usually when we're in an El Nino, we usually get a little bit more rain in the springtime. Of course, honestly, it just tilts the scale to more rain. We've seen, we've been anything but average this year. So we will see what happens. Make sure to check out that article on KSAT.com. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Just about 648, 78 degrees. What a weekend. Opening, really, it's week one for college football. I know people say last weekend was week, that's week zero. We got a lot of scores in and around San Antonio. I'm so excited. We're back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy week one. First game in the American Athletic Conference. Jeff Trailer, UTSA Roanoke, starting off the regular season, taking on the Houston Cougars. Let's jump to the first quarter. Houston striking first. Look at this. The Texas Tech transfer, Donovan Smith, throwing it to Joseph Manjack. Fourth, eight yard touchdown. Cougs led 7 0. Next drive, Roadrunners answer back, though. Handoff, Kavorian Barnes, and he powers in for a four yard touchdown. We are tied at seven. He also had 44 yards running on that drive. UTSA trailing 10-7 at halftime, third quarter. Coog strike against Smith, lobbing it. Matthew Golden adjusts. Nice touchdown grab. I don't want to give him too much credit. Six yards. Coogs leave 17-7. That touchdown was a result of a Frank Harris interception. He had three on the day. Houston led 17-7 after three. Roadrunners, though, fighting back. Fourth frame, Harris. Joshua Cephas breaking a tackle. Jukes the defender, scores a big 20-yard touchdown. The Roadrunners still down three. And that's how they would close it out. The Roadrunners fall in their season opener for the second year in a row, 17 to 14. We know there are so many teams in and around San Antonio. More local action. Trinity losing to St. John's University, 34-31 in OT. Texas Lutheran losing on the road, 48-31. Wisconsin, Oshkosh, and UIW losing against UTEP last night. Final score, 28 to 14. We're going to have the play-by-play -play of that game on Instant Replay this evening. 
Of course, we know there's so many Longhorn fans in and around San Antonio. Number 11, Texas, opening the season at home. Rice Owls, after a slow start, UT got it going. Look at you here. Whew. First quarter, Quinn Ewers taking the shot. Initially rolls left, turns around, screen past Jonathan Brooks, and he goes all the way. 37-yard touchdown. The Horns led 7-3. They were up 16-3 at halftime. Late third quarter. Here we go. Ewers scoring. Look, makes it look easy. Looks like Peyton Manning just walking in there. Texas opens up the season. 37-10 win. Next week, they're taking on ooh, Bama, number four in the nation. Here we go. Second favorite. Here we go. I want to see the place. Come on. All right, Colorado, new Colorado head coach, Deion Sanders. I was going to say, this is my second favorite game of the day. He made his debut for Colorado yesterday, taking on number 17 TCU, primetime matchup. Huge upset. His son, quarterback Shadur Sanders. This game went back and forth until Colorado scored the final touchdown of the day, late fourth quarter. Sanders, boom, Dylan Edwards breaking off. 46 yards down the sideline. Sanders passing for 510 yards. That is a Colorado school record. Four, inter four touchdowns, no interceptions. 38-47. And the Buffs shock TCU, who's just in the national championship. We had some uh, guys that singled themselves out with their playing and their playing ability. A lot of guys you doubted. One of them from HBCU. I think he had uh, 510 yards passing in a Power 5 football game. And he happened to be my son. And I'm proud of him tremendously. That was sweet. That was sweet. I loved it. It was a great game. Honestly, probably the, the game of the day. More Big 12 scorers. Oklahoma rolled Arkansas State 73-0. Iowa State beating Northern Iowa 39. Texas State. Winning at Baylor, 42 to 31. First win over a Power Five team since becoming an FBS school. Texas Tech falling short to Wyoming, 35 to 33. Speaking of Texas State, you don't want to miss the battle. I-35 this coming Saturday. Roadrunners and Bobcats at the Dome, 2:30. Other games to tell you about. K-State shut out Southeast Missouri State, 45-0, and Oklahoma State beat Central Arkansas, 27 to 13. Of course, we know we got the Aggie fans. You want to? There we go. Uh, shout out to Texas A&M. Really, you know, starting off strong. 52 to 10. Some people would say it's just New Mexico, but you can only beat who's in front of you. So big shouts to the Aggies starting off strong. I know a lot of people have a lot of hope for this young team this year. And hey, they're already the number 23 team in the nation. Lastly, shout out to my squad, Penn State. Is this your doing that? No, it is not. It was actually a surprise. But here we go. Oh! Start off with a loose squirrel on the field. It's a big squirrel. Uh, what are wow. they feeding Go them big or go Penn home. State. All right, Penn State hosting West Virginia. Drew Aller shining. First game as a Penn State starting quarterback, 21 to 29, finishing with 325 yards, passing three touchdowns, no interceptions. Aller and wide receiver Keandre Lambert-Smith proved to be a strong connection. 72-yard touchdown right there. That was the opening possession of the game, the longest pass of Aller's career, young career. Lambert-Smith tallied 123 yards, career best. Two touchdown grabs, four catches. Penn State decimating, 38-15. to So what a great start to the season. I want to go back to the Colorado game. Deion Sanders giving all the love to his son, rightfully so. School record, first game right. coming from HBCU. But also Travis Hunter, who basically did what Deion Sanders used to do, played on both sides of the ball, playing pretty much the entire game. You know, that's the one game I was like, I was cleaning and I was listening to because uh -huh. my husband was watching it. And I was like, these guys, the commentators, were pumped oh, yeah. about that player. It was exciting because yeah. remember, TCU was in the national championship last year. Yep. And I'm pretty sure Colorado only won one game last year. So just As to see the juxtaposition of success. an SMU girl, I am not upset that TCU lost. There you go. All right, time now. 6.56, 76 degrees. We'll be right back. Alrighty, today's forecast, 85 at 10, 92 at noon, high fire danger today, 100 degrees for the high. Looking at your seven-day forecast, 100 tomorrow for Labor Day, and guess what? Triple digits in the full forecast for the first full week of September. It's going to be very difficult for us to shake this weather pattern through mid-September at least, unfortunately. That's rough. Yeah, know, guys, it is, it is. But, you know, we'll let you know as soon as that changes. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take an hour-long break for GMA. We'll see you back here at 8. See y'all at 8. Live from KSAC 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now.
The Texas A&M Forest Service says crews have been battling flames in Walker County since 2.30 Friday afternoon. This morning, still only 40% of that fire is contained. What's being done now as it continues to go rapidly. I came in for a couple days and enjoyed the river walk and now I'm heading back. And we spoke with some travelers at the San Antonio International Airport about their travel plans through the weekend. And in today's Leading Us Air, we're talking to the president and CEO of the airport about the latest numbers and the big renovations. Taking a look outside, 76. It's going to be another warm day for this Sunday of our Labor Day weekend. Sarah Spivey has our holiday forecast for you. All right, time now. Just about 8.01. It is 76 degrees. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good morning. Happy we know Sunday. so many people sleeping through. We had some people comment on our photos yesterday. Shout out to Instagram and uh, Oh, what Facebook. did they say? They were like, nice? oh, they're always very nice. <laughs> oh, thank, thanks, guys. Yeah, but they, they were funny. They were like, oh, we missed you. We slept in because of Labor Day weekend. And I was like, oh, don't worry. We have a free app. <laughs> so you can stream right now our KSAT Plus app. And I'm not jealous of the mm. sleeping in at all, at all. Not jealous at all. <laughs> <laughs> Temperatures this morning are generally in the low to mid 70s out there. It's 77 at the airport. Clear skies too. 75 New Braunfels, 72 in Seguin, 70 in Bernie, and 72 in Kerrville. Here's your Sunday forecast. We're going to be sunny today. 85 degrees at 10, 92 at noon, 100 for the high. Southeast winds today, a little breezy at times, 5 to 15 miles per hour. And a reminder that fire danger does remain high today as you're out and about enjoying those outdoor activities. Let's take a moment to remember that that fire danger is high. Coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about how today is our 67th 100 degree day. I'll give you a preview of Labor Day, get you ready for the holiday itself. And then finally, a lot of people are out and about maybe wanting to enjoy some time on local lakes, local rivers. I'm going to show you a lot of the local rivers with zero stream flow and how long tubing is now taking on the Comal in New Braunfels. Those details ahead. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. So we've been following the wildfire out in Walker County in Huntsville. As of this morning, officials say 4,254 acres have burned, and it's only about 40% contained. So this is a video from our sister station out in Houston, KPRC. As of now, residents in certain areas, they're even being asked to evacuate to local churches. The Florida Forest Service, they've been called out to help. They're actually going to take over operations tomorrow morning, allowing the Texas Forest Service to resume operations and get a break. The Texas a and Forest Service says crews have actually been battling these flames since 2 p.m. on Friday. Right now, investigators still working, trying to figure out how this all happened. We now know a 61-year-old man died after he was hit by a driver on the city's northwest side. This happened on Friday in the evening near Fredericksburg Road. Police say the man was walking within a crosswalk when a driver in a Mustang hit him at the intersection. The driver did stop to render aid. It's not expected to face any charges. An ID of the victim has not been released at this time. And a shooting investigation now underway after a 19-year-old showed up to the hospital with a gunshot wound. San Antonio police tell us the victim taken to the hospital Friday evening told police he was shot while walking to his car at a friend's house. His mom took him to the hospital. Police later found out the teen was not telling the truth about who actually took him. Investigators could not even find the crime scene. They're still working, trying to figure out what exactly happened, when, and why. It is Labor Day weekend. That means a lot of people traveling. So what can our airport expect in terms of traffic? And what can we expect with the multi-billion dollar renovation? That is why Jesus Sines, director of the San Antonio International Airport, joined us for this weekend's leading essay. All right, Mr. Sides, thank you so much for joining me today. So right off the bat, what does the expansion of the airport, what does that mean not only for people coming to and going to other places from San Antonio, but also our local economy? Well, I think it's a mixture of, of impact that it's going to have on the overall city of San Antonio. First and form, foremost, absolutely, it will be a large economic impact to the city. Uh, being able to provide an expansion and being able to provide additional capacity as it relates to more gates uh, to the overall airport complex. Um, right now, we're, we're scheduled for, for adding up to 17 gates to the existing footprint, and that really starts to prepare ourselves for the future. I think it'll be an enormous impact when you start to look at 
you know, a transformation of the existing facility and the, the ability to be able to provide a better product and a better level of service for the people that, you know, come in and out. What does the timetable look like? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's not easy to get these up off the ground. Um, I think we have a very aggressive schedule. When you look at the foundation that was established and set in order for us to be able to execute on a program of this size. Um, now that we've done that, we have finished a lot of that, you know, planning. And, and now we're right in the middle of design. You know, we have 10% of the terminal, you know, uh, expansion design. We want to aggressively get to 30, 40% between now and, and next year, uh, at this time next year. So as we do that, then we can really start to put shovels in the ground and begin to focus on, you know, construction over the next three years, you know, from 24 to early 2028, you know, we want to be completed with this and uh, present the, and showcase the new airport to the entire world. All right, so 2028 is the ultimate goal. What will, you know, flyers, customers, what will we experience in that time period in between? Is it is it going to be chaos at the airport while construction's undergoing? Well, we're really fortunate in the fact that, you know, we still have Terminal A and Terminal B that will, will continue to operate the way they do today. We have 27 existing gates uh, that are operable today. We will continue that. We're in October of this year, we're going to, you know, have the groundbreaking ceremony to add an additional uh, ground loading facility uh, to Terminal A. So that'll give us a little bit more capacity, uh, three ground loading positions with two additional that will get us pretty close to 32 different, you know, opportunities to move aircraft in and out at the same time, um, every day, day in and day out. So there may be a little discomfort in the Terminal B area, but overall we, we fully anticipate because of where it's at, it's on a brownfield, we should have minimum impact we have strategically positioned ourselves so we can fence off the entire area so that it has no impact to existing operations in Terminal A and Terminal B, inclusive of the airfield. There's going to be a lot of people traveling this weekend, Labor Day weekend, one of the busiest of the year. What do you guys expect? Yeah, I think um, much of the same of what we had in the summer. Um, a lot of credit goes to the entire team here at the airport. Um, whether it's our airlines, whether it's our federal partners, or whether it's the people that are just on boots on the ground day in and day out, making it happen every day. A million passengers traveled through the airport in July. We had a day in July that exceeded, you know, over 40,000 passengers in one day. So we, we, we purposefully have what we call, you know, concept of operations. We call them con ops that we put together for each one of these events. We fully expect all of that to continue to flow into this Labor Day weekend. We were number two in the nation as it relates to comparing small, medium, and large airports. Can put them all together. We were number two in the nation in the processing times that we have here at the airport. All right, Mr. Sines, thank you so much for your time there. We'll be with you on this journey to 2028. Looking forward to it. Anyone who missed any part of this conversation, you can check it all out right now to ksat.com. Mr. Sines, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Max. Take care. And it really is so exciting. I mean, in just a few years, we're going to have a completely different looking airport. It's right. going to be completely updated. And really, he was explaining how it, it could be one of the best in the country. I mean, San Antonio is a, the San Antonio airport is a very well kept secret of mm -hmm. how chill and easy it is to fly in and out of. But if it has all those amenities, mm. the secret's not going to be so much of a secret anymore. I think San Antonio's a secret. Yeah. All right, time now, 8.09, 78 degrees. All right, before we head to break, you can now see the world's largest bat colony live from your phone or desktop thanks to the Bat Channel. The Bat Channel. All right, check out the live footage from overnight. The Bracken Bat Cave, home to the largest colony of bats in the world, just 20 minutes outside of San Antonio. So before you used to have to make a reservation to see the tornado of bats, but now you can catch the experience online via live stream. Head to ksat.com to find that link. All right, let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. All right, it's only 76 now. How hot is it going to get? What record are we going to set this year? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. So happening tomorrow, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, they're hosting a Labor Day blood drive. 
helping relieve the blood shortages we see around our community. They're also honoring Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. It's going 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. This is all happening at Rolling Oaks Mall. The Blood and Tissue Center says donations are needed all the time, but especially during the holidays, especially when the community sees a rise in emergencies. I got to say, we've both donated blood before. It is quick. It is easy. You show up. You're out of there within 40 minutes. Very comfortable. They yeah. make you very comfortable. It's very cool, mm -hmm. cold in there. I even needed a, a warm blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's one reason to give blood, right? You can ex <laughs> escape the heat, yeah. right? And speaking of the heat, everybody's feeling it. Not only us, but also Mother Nature. And take a look at this picture sent in through KSAT Connect. Yeah, just a reminder that whenever we're dry, snakes come out oh. to try to uh, get some water. Is that a rattlesnake? I think it is. Or I think is it's it a diamondback. If I yeah, oh, diamondback. It's a diamondback rattlesnake. Mm, terrifying. I know. So just be aware of your surroundings today. Everybody's looking for water across the state of Texas. And temperatures are going to be near 100 degrees. Here's a look at the current drought monitor across the state. Exceptional drought has extended all along that I-35 corridor up to Waco. And then also out in across parts of East Texas and Southeast Texas nearer to Houston. It's no exception here. We are uh, part of the nation, part of the country rather that's under the worst drought. In fact, there's very little to no soil moisture anywhere. You see this exceptional drought from San Antonio to Bandera to Kerrville to Fredericksburg to Blanco, San Marcos and Austin. And so recreationally, a lot of people are going to want to enjoy some time on local rivers, particularly the Comal and the Guadalupe in New Braunfels. So I thought for a moment we would check in with our local rivers and it is not a pretty picture. There is zero stream flow on the Nueces below Yavaldi. Now that doesn't mean there's no water in that river. It's just not flowing, which means that bacteria can build and it actually can become a health hazard to swim in rivers with zero stream flow. Practically zero stream flow for the Frio near Concan, zero stream flow in the Medina River near Lacoste, zero stream flow in the Guadalupe at Spring Branch north of Canyon Lake. And then for the Comal, now go out and support the local businesses. Absolutely, they need your help. Here's the thing, stream flow is slow on the Comal. So what normally takes like an hour and a half, an hour and 45 to float, now is taking closer to three and a half to four hours to float the Comal because of that low and slow flow. And unfortunately, in the forecast, there is no chance for rain and certainly no chance for beneficial rain over the next seven several days around San Antonio. We are starting September sizzling and dry. So just a reminder that fire danger is also high. There's a lot of dry fuel out there. It's a holiday weekend, so some friendly reminders. No campfires or burn piles. Avoid using tools that create sparks. Dispose of cigarettes properly. That's a big one. Do not drag trailer chains. And then finally, I've seen a lot of cars parked on grass. Do not park your vehicles on grass, especially the high grass that can catch fire easily. It's going to be a hot day, so take advantage of these milder mornings. It's 72 in Kerrville, 70 in Rock Springs, 70 in Yavaldi, 75 in Del Rio. Good morning in Catula, where it's 76, 75 in New Braunfels, and 74 in Pleasanton. All right, you may notice that it feels a little bit more humid out there this morning, and that's exactly the case. Dew points are in the 70s around San Antonio at the top of the scale for higher humidity. Not as bad in Del Rio and Rock Springs, where it's still relatively dry. Here's the good news. The humidity will be coming down this afternoon during the peak heat of the day, which means no heat index value for us. Still, it's going to be hot, 85 at 10, 92 at noon. Looking at that afternoon high temperature, partly cloudy skies, a few more clouds in the afternoon, 100. We're going to have southeast winds at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. It's going to be a mild night, still 90 degrees at 9 p.m. Looking at neighborhood high temperatures today, 99 in Kerrville, 102 in Del Rio, 100 in Gonzales, 100 in Pleasanton, 98 in Uvalde, 97 in Rock Springs. Look at that forecast. Triple digits every single day, including tomorrow for the holiday itself. Fire danger remains high. 100 degrees every single day. Coming up, it's an ozone action day. What does that mean? Are there is there more ozone in the air? I'll talk about that. And we'll talk about uh, the mid-September outlook as well. So even beyond the seven-day forecast. Whew. 
yeah, hot. Be safe out there. Absolutely. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. 818, 77 degrees. Okay, this pizza parlor all closed up when Tim Gerber stopped by this week to ask why their inspection score went from nearly perfect to failing. That's next. And right, let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, five, seven, one, fireball nine, daily four, 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 four. Look at that. Good luck. Uh, one, fireball two. Cash five, two, 10, 15, 28, 34, Texas lotto, two, 18, 37, 39, 52, 54. Powerball 25, 38, 42, 66, 67, Powerball 19, Power Play 4. Good luck. A pizza place with a pest problem gets a failing score just months after posting a nearly perfect one. That is crazy. Hmm. Just a, how much time a month is. All right, and a pair of businesses inside a supermarket they were found with numerous. This is a family show, so I feel gross even saying this live and dead roaches. Mm. Not great. All right, Tim Gerber taking us behind the kitchen door. Fourth Street Pizza, located in the 900 block of 24th Street, failed its July inspection. The inspector giving them a 69, a 30 point drop off from the 99 they got back in March. The cold hold was too warm. Several items were condemned. They also had to toss out white moldy tomatoes. Raw chicken was sitting above non raw foods. Bleach was stored on top of a fridge. Foods listed as keep frozen were found stored at room temperature in the kitchen, which was 100 degrees. There were ants, gnats, and flies throughout the kitchen area. The business also in need of a good cleaning. I stopped by this week to find out what happened, but the business wasn't open. They were scheduled to have a reinspection. <laughs> Poco Loco Supermercado, located in the 6,000 block of Ingram Road, earned an 80. Several cold hold units and coolers were not keeping proper temps. The business told to fix them or be forced to discard foods found above temperature. Multiple flies were found in the food prep area, and so were multiple holes for them to enter in the back receiving area. They needed to clean some vents and clean the bathrooms to remove the foul odor. <laughs> Inside the same supermarket, El Folklore Bakery got a 76. A worker was touching a cake with bare hands while decorating it, and there was no hand washing sink in that area. There were multiple gnats in the food prep area and numerous live and dead roaches found all over the place. The business told to hire pest control, provide proof, and do a thorough cleaning. The inspector warning if one more roach is found, they could be shut down. I'm Tim Gerber with KSAT 12. I do the behind the kitchen door and I just follow up on the health reports. I stopped by to see if they've made the required corrections. This is all the things they wanted you guys to fix. Are you aware that that stuff was fixed? Yeah. Okay. Maya Cafe is located right next to the bakery. They too had a problem with roaches. The inspector gave them an 82. A manager told me over the phone they've made the corrections and continue to deal with the pests. Did you guys hire the pest control services? Say that again. We have a different company already, so we fix that. For Behind the Kitchen Door, I'm Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. It really makes you think about where you go. Really does. For brunch. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I'm not invited. <laughs> Time now, 825, 78 degrees. You're always invited to brunch. Mm, you just always like say it. no, Max. All right, speaking of local businesses trying to stay open, after recent record heat, what CPS is now saying about what we can expect in the fall. Good morning and welcome back. Happy Labor Day weekend. I'm going to be completely transparent. I am working on a reel on, uh, it's like. Teaching Max on Instagram. how to make reels. I have a newfound respect <laughs> for people who do reels and do TikToks because it is so difficult. And the process, I really thought it was going to be like, oh, you click a few buttons, you're good to go. No, it takes forever. It takes forever. It's like putting together a whole news story. Here's the thing, Max and Sarah. Oh, yeah, we have a reels queen over here. Listen, we're young, okay, but we're. I'd put, that in, I'd put no. that in quotes. Max emailed um, a local news source. It was not a local, it was <laughs> no, a national I'm news sorry, source. A national it was a na an international an news error. source who made about an egregious error about a very important person in their, I'm not he's, getting into it. Really you know what, Max is upset that they have not yeah. responded if back you over the Labor Day weekend. If you are an international multi-million dollar conglomeration that is a, a huge part of informing people around the globe and you make an error, 
you should tell me you're own acting up. like an old man without I, tell me. I'm just you're saying they like never responded to me or changed. It's anything. Labor Day weekend. Oh, I they, sent it on Friday wow. morning. All I have to say is we're we're slowly becoming our parents. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and take a look outside with temperatures right now. It's 72 degrees in Bernie, 77 at the airport, 70 in Los Maples, 72 in Yavaldi, and 75 at Stinson. At 71 in Comfort. By the way, there is an ozone action day today. Although it really will only uh, ozone may only increase during a few hours in the afternoon when ozone is typically its highest. So forecast air quality will be unhealthy for those who are sensitive to ozone. And if you are, you know who you are. Uh, if you're not sensitive to ozone, you can continue uh, as if today's just a normal day. But there will be a few hours in the afternoon where the ozone levels may be elevated. One way to avoid higher ozone is to carpool today if you can. 100 degrees today for your Sunday 100. Tomorrow, high fire danger will be with us all Labor Day weekend long. Coming up in the forecast, we're going to take a look at the extended uh, September forecast through the middle of September. That pesky heat high, it's coming back in a big way. I'll have more details coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, Labor Day weekend, usually the unofficial end to summer. There's a record heat. Some businesses in and around San Antonio, they are hoping summer ends as soon as possible. It's been a cruel summer. Our Avery Everett sat down with the owners of an outdoor gelato shop struggling to keep their doors open. She also asked CPS Energy about their expectations for the fall. All right, ladies. To Isaac Butler. You're going to be really happy with okay. that pistachio. It is fantastic. Labor Day weekend couldn't come any sooner. I would say uh, as far as this summer goes, we will we'll be happy to see it in the rearview mirror. He and Ivette Gray own the Holotus shop Congelado, and summer 2023 has come with many struggles. It can be really disheartening. Uh, to be quite honest, uh, <laughs> I take a lot of pride in the shop. With the hottest summer on record in San Antonio, so many outdoor businesses and plazas are sitting empty. But as the fall starts to come soon, CPS Energy is still warning that there might be concerns with the energy grid. We just got to build more capacity. Just two weeks ago, CPS Energy sounded the alarm about the potential of controlled energy outages. San Antonio and Bear County officials also warned of ongoing concerns about the ERCOT grid in the summer heat. Until we get the, the, the scale that we need, to completely, you know, do away with this issue, you know, I mean, next summer will not be much different than this summer, depending upon what happens at the state level. So you're kind of wondering how long does this heat last? The congelado team is ending this summer with high energy bills and one freezer damaged by the heat. When it's 105, it, it doesn't feel like it's special. Both hoping this Labor Day is not their last. We'll never know what this summer cost us. Uh, I just hope that if um, that we can be here to fight another summer. That day two weeks ago when CPS Energy warned of those controlled outages, I wanted to see if it worked. Now CPS Energy tells me they weren't able to track exactly how many households turned down their energy usage, but within their conservation program, they were able to save enough energy to power 46,000 homes. I'm Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery. Friends and family of a man who died while in custody of BCSO deputies gathered yesterday outside the Bear County Jail. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says Emmanuel Mora suffered a medical episode while he was being booked that ultimately led to Mora's death. Balcones Heights Police arrested Mora on a drug charge, took him into the Bear County Jail last Sunday night. Deputies say when they tried to put handcuffs on him, he refused, kicked deputies when they tried to restrain him. A taser ended up being used on Mora. That's when deputies say he became unresponsive. Mora's cousin says her family still trying to make sense of everything. Still doesn't seem real. Uh, my cousin was a lot of things, and one of them was just a good man. We want to find out what really happened, and I don't think we're getting the right answers. We're hearing different things, so I think we all just really want to know what happened. BCSO says Moore's death is still under investigation. The Seguin Police Department have arrested 24-year-old Isaac Mesa Jr. for allegedly shooting and killing another man. Officers say they found a 36-year-old victim with a gunshot wound around 2 o'clock yesterday morning. Police were later able to identify the suspect as Mesa Jr. of New Braunfels. Right now, we're still working to learn exactly what led up to that shooting. Mesa Jr. is being held at the Guadalupe County Jail.
Well, a Texas judge has temporarily blocked a law that some Texans say infringes on their freedom of expression. A San Antonio drag entertainment company challenging Senate Bill 12, which bans drag performances in front of minors. In fact, the language of the bill reads, quote, relating to restricting certain sexually oriented performances on public property, on the premises of a commercial enterprise, or in the presence of a child, authorizing a civil penalty, creating a criminal offense. Camelia Juarez tells us some people in our community, they're concerned. Oh, it's frightening. I miss when the worst things drag queens had to worry about was the rain or it being too hot. Drag queen Iridescent says she worries that her full face of makeup and pink suit could lead to criminal charges for performers like her and the places she performs. But if they saw us, I could be arrested or fined or become a felon just because I'm talking to you in front of a camera dressed in a suit that I made. San Antonio drag company 360 Queen Entertainment is challenging SB 12 alongside the American Civil Liberties Union, arguing the law would affect the drag company's ability to perform at Tomatillos, a family-owned Mexican restaurant on the city's north side, because minors could see the show from the open patio. All you have to do is trust American parents to know what their children should or not, should not be exposed to and allow them to make the decision for themselves. The ACLU argues SB 12 could impact more than drag. SB 12 is written in such an overly broad way that it could impact things like traveling theater shows, um, concerts, professional cheerleading, um, even something like a karaoke night. So it's quite dangerous in the way that it could lead to government censorship of many different forms of art. For Iridescent, expressing herself in heels helps her mental health. If I'm sad, I can do a sad song and make the audience cry with me. If I'm happy, I can do a happy song and get the audience to have fun with me. And <laughs> it's cheaper than therapy. Iridescent says she's thankful a Texas judge temporarily blocked SB 12, but she's still nervous. I feel like we're on the edge of a cliff and we're holding on by a tiny little thread and that we don't know if we're going to be saved right now. Camelia Juarez, Case at 12 News. And the Texas Attorney General's office representing the state, obviously, in the lawsuit. The AG's office says that the law was passed to protect children and uphold public decency. So it will be several weeks before a judge decides if this law will stay in place or not. All right, time now, 838, 78 degrees. A ship from the 19th century has been found. Still ahead, a look at the wreckage and where it was discovered. Plus... San Antonio going for the world's largest piñata. Did we do it? Stay tuned. I love David Hurtado. I love it when he's on our show. So I hope he's watching. Fun. He, he Good texted morning, me yesterday, David. letting me know. He's like, I did this whole story. You better watch. I'm like, don't worry, David. We got you covered. I think we have to watch, David. <laughs> Fear at back. Well, welcome back, everyone. I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey. I hope you're enjoying your Labor Day weekend so far. It's not too bad out there this morning. Take a look at temperatures. It's 77 in San Antonio, 75 in New Braunfels, 75 in Kerrville, 75 in Rock Springs, and 77 in Del Rio. Now, it is a little bit more humid than it was to start the day yesterday. Dew points are in the 70s. That means you can really feel that humidity out there. Uh, it's oppressively humid. But here's the good news. As we head into the afternoon, the hottest part of the day. Our humidity is going to come down. Dew points are going to be in the 50s, which is pretty pleasant. So even though we're going to be near 100 degrees, it's not going to feel much hotter than that. So that is good news. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Sunny skies out there right now, 85 at 10. A little bit of clouds by noon when it's going to be 92. Then partly cloudy skies in the afternoon, 100 for the high. Today will be our 67th 100 degree day in San Antonio, and it really won't cool down all that much this evening. Temperatures are still going to be in the 90s by 8, 9 o'clock tonight. So take a look at your neighborhoods. This is how hot it's going to be around South Central Texas and San Antonio. It's going to be 99 in Kerrville, 99 in Hondo, 101 in Floresville, 99 in Seguin and in Converse, 100 in New Braunfels, Yavaldi you'll be at 99 degrees, 101 in Nixon Smiley today. As we take a look at the weather setup across the nation, some flooding ongoing across parts of the desert uh, 
southwest and up toward Nevada. But here in Texas, we are seeing a very small low pressure system. But as you can see, there's not much rain around this low. And really, if you're traveling across the state, you may run into a couple of isolated showers as you're heading toward Houston or up toward Dallas. But generally, it's going to stay pretty quiet. And then that heat high, that bully that just really sat overhead over throughout summer is going to continue to move into Texas throughout this week. So that means dry and it means hot too. And even beyond this first week of September, it's looking pretty, pretty hot through the middle of September. We'll have above average temperatures or good chance for above average temperatures from the Climate Prediction Center all throughout Texas through mid-September. And what's a little bit worse is that we're going to also see below average precipitation through the middle of September as well. So unfortunately, some bad news there, but if you're a silver lining person, at least the weather will be okay for Labor Day. Now there will be high fire dangers, so we really do need to exercise precaution with those backyard barbecues and those kinds of things. 76 in the morning, 91 at noon, 100 for the high for Labor Day. A little bit breezier with winds from the south gusting up to about 20 miles per hour tomorrow. That will certainly not help the high fire danger. And then triple digits for us all week long. We're going to be looking at highs near 100 uh, through the week ahead. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Now to the world's largest corn pinata in San Antonio, brought to the Alamo City by the Aces High Production Company with the help of lots of artists around the Alamo City. Love this story. Promotions producer David Hurtado stopped by the San Antonio Chato Ranch where this cornata was made. All right, San Antonio, we have Fiesta and we love our spurs. And today I'm here at the San Antonio Chato Ranch where we're trying for the world's largest piñata. And this is the inspiration. All right, I am here with Tamra, who is the producer of the world's largest piñata here at the San Antonio Chato Ranch. All right, Tamara, what's going on here today? Big things, very, very big things. We are working with an amazing group of creatives here in San Antonio to create and construct the world's largest piñata. It will be over 10 stories tall. I want to go step by step. I mean, I'm looking at the pieces back there getting put together. It is quite an undertaking. Over the past several months, we've been working with Masa Collective to help us design, fabricate these pieces and parts, and bring it to life in a way that was going to be really amazing, beat the world record, and safe. Now I'm here with Ruby, who is with Masa Collective, one of the three entities that are working on this world's largest piñata. Ruby, tell me about the creative behind such a project. It's been crazy. We have a great team. We have uh, one of the, I think, the greatest artists in San Antonio, which is Rudy Herrera, who came up with this design of this giant elote for San Antonio. Once you have it put together, obviously it's going to come back down, which is unfortunate. And is that it? That's done? We're done? It. It's going to be up for at least, right now, two, three hours so that everybody can look at it, so that you know they can measure it. And then after that, it has to come down because it's not made to stay permanently up. the third component in this whole creative escapade, the Chato Ranch. Why the Chato Ranch? You know, I had never heard of them until I started doing some research. And once I started to look into their history and their legacy here, we're talking fourth generation Chato performers, I was blown away. And they just won the Texas State Championship. So for me, it was done. This is where we have to bring this to life. We've got Mundo and Annika here with the San Antonio Charo Association, the oldest Charo Association in the United States, and now the home or the brief home of the world's largest piñata here in San Antonio, the Cornata, right, Mundo? Yep. We're, we're trying to win the tallest piñata in the world right now. We haven't got it, but... Well, I hear Guinness is here to check it out. Yes, sir, they, they are here. This is just another feather in San Antonio's hat, and we will get confirmation. Absolutely, once the uh, measurements have happened and Guinness has said, yes, you check the box, this is bigger than the last one, then we will be awarded our certificate and it's official. San Antonio will have the world's largest pinata ever created right here. All right, I have Chloe here from Guinness World Records. 
been a long night. The crew worked hard. Did we do it? Yes, San Antonio is officially amazing. Okay, great, we did it. We have the world's largest piñata right here in San Antonio. So what is the criteria? What are, what are you looking for? This piñata needs to look like and act like a normal sized piñata and it has to function like one, which means it has to open, which we verified. And then this had to break the record in terms of the largest height, width and length and the sum total needed to be bigger than the previous record holder, which it is. Perfect. All right, Chloe. Thank you, San Antonio. We did it. We had, if not for just a brief moment, the world's largest piñata. Thank you, Chloe. All right. Well done. Way to go. Okay. So in honor mm -hmm. um, of their inspiration, it was like the corn nuts. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was the elote flavored corn nuts. So we are trying them. Okay. Oh, let's go. Get ready for some serious crunch. Oh yeah, you hear that? <laughs> you hear that down in Houston? I'm sorry. How are we going? Like one I to ten? I crunch loud. You crunch, loud crunch. What else? They're what do you got? One corn. to ten. They're good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're corn nuts. Matt, I, I love corn nuts. I'm not gonna eat on there. This is egregious. You <laughs> ate ice cream last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the ice cream's different. I, this is ridiculous. I don't need people to hear my crunch. Hello. Taste it. Taste it. That was, oh. you know, I'm not going to die for this. Do it. Oh, <laughs> it is This cute. is just embarrassing. All right, 850, it is 78 degrees out there. I want to know what the piñata was stuffed with. Mm. Was it stuffed with corn nuts? Pretty sure it was stuffed with corn nuts, wasn't it? It's a lot of corn nuts. All right. Yeah, we'll be right Max back. Max is a party pooper. That's not true. I'll crunch for all of us. Bye, Sarah, I'll miss you. You can probably still hear us crunching. Mm -hmm. All right, a long lost shipwreck from the late 19th century has been discovered in Lake Michigan. Two shipwreck hunters discovered the wreckage of the schooner Trinidad earlier this year, which was built in 1887 and constructed to pass through the Welland Canal that connected Lake Erie to Ontario. Ontario. All right, its final voyage, May 11th, 1881. According to the Historical Society, it sank was traveling down the coast of Wisconsin toward Milwaukee, and I know everyone was very concerned. I ate the corn nuts. You they did. were delicious. I'm proud of you, Max. Way well, to go. He just didn't want to eat them on air because right. of he was so embarrassed after how loud I crunched. <laughs> <laughs> we did we did figure out that was the distinguishing factor when I heard how loud she was crunching. Yeah. I was like, you know what? No one needs three of these. No to one each needs their own, right? Mm. Here, Max. Hey, we just got the pollen count in Molter down from <laughs> yesterday. They're now moderate at 950. It's already almost 80 degrees in San Antonio, mostly clear skies right now. And as you look at today's forecast, 92 at noon, 100 for the high temperature this afternoon. Southeast winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. It's going to be a mild night with temperatures in the upper 80s still by 10 p.m. Looking at the rest of your Labor Day weekend, high fire danger all weekend long. Tomorrow will be at 102. And speaking of 100, take a look at the forecast for us. We're easily going to get to 70, 100 degree days or greater in San Antonio for this year. This year, the year with the hottest summer on record, the hottest month on record, yeah, August, Sarah. the hottest month on record, the longest stretch of Sarah triple Spivey's digit punching weather. air for those who Because can't we see. have got so many records. We're just, <laughs> 2023 is going pop, 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 breaking all of these high records. <laughs> she almost punched my face. I yeah, did. Yeah, that was I very close. Um, uh, Caitlin, our producer, um, what, what flavor were Elote. these corn nuts? Elote, yeah. Yeah. Mexican, Mexican street, street style street. corn. Okay. Delicious. Well, so I, they're good yeah. for our viewers. You didn't give a one to ten. Oh, I'd give them eight, nine. Okay. Very good. Oh. Rookie score, you got to give Desmond. Dorito Cool Ranch. Yeah. That's exactly. And Fritos had a baby. Okay. That's, in the form of corn nuts. That makes sense. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs> we'll see you back here, 4.30 a.m. Whoop, whoop.